Welcome into a special edition of Pat's Chat, everyone, as we continue our look back at the Final Four run from 15 years ago. Today, we focus on North Carolina, the second round game. And joining us, a member of that staff, Scott Cherry, along with Lamar Butler and Fowler and Campbell. Guys, first off, it is wonderful to see all of you guys again uh, to come back for this 15th anniversary special. And good to see everyone. Glad that everyone is doing well. Likewise. Good to see y'all too, yes, man. Good to see you too, Bill. Thanks for having us. All right, here we go. Scott, you obviously played at North Carolina. So, again, Mason with a little bit of maybe an advantage because you knew the style of play that they were going to have. You knew what they were going to run. What was the prep like for these guys when you realized, hey, we're playing my old team, a team I won a national title with in 93, but here you are, you're getting it set to go in 2006 in the second round? Yeah, and you know, in the NCAA tournament, you have a – it's a pretty quick turnaround from the first round game to the second round game. Sometimes it's less than 48 hours. So having, having the advantage and, it, and it's all about matchups in the NCAA tournament. And I think we were very fortunate uh, to have a, a good first round matchup in terms of our team and their team and the matchup. And then to turn around and have to play North Carolina in the second round, I think it was ideal uh, because the, the, the prep was, was, was not easy, but it was fairly simple in terms of what they did offensively and what they did defensively. They weren't complex. Uh, the biggest thing was handling their secondary break action, which Coach Williams has run and Coach Smith ran for 30 years. And it's, it's very similar. And there's a couple of actions that they do off of it that are predicated by where the ball gets passed to. So all you had to do is to key the guys into – if they pass it here and then there and they follow the pass, this is what they're getting ready to do. And then the rest was just dealing with their motion offense and then how we wanted to handle Tyler Hansborough. Uh, he was a freshman that year, but he was, you know, as you know, he's a tremendous player um, and working on doubling the post. Um, and we had kind of faced that in the first game with, with Paul Davis, the big guy from Michigan State. So uh, we, we kind of plan set. It was just a matter of running through what they did. And like I said, it wasn't complex. Uh, they weren't – they're a very good basketball team, but it wasn't a, a very detailed uh, prep in terms of what they do and how they do it. It's just keying the guys into a, a few things. And then defensively, they were pretty much man-to-man -man and then, you know, run and jump stuff, which we were almost identical. So it was like playing ourselves. Guys, I want to go back to the day before the game to the team meal, of course, at Outback because everything was at Outback that, back in 2006. And I don't remember who it was, so maybe Lamar or Fowler, you guys can remember. We're watching Wichita State upset Tennessee, and somebody said this is exactly what CBS wants, the rematch with us in Wichita State back in D.C. You hadn't even played Carolina yet, but that kind of confidence was stunning to me to sit there and be like, man, these guys – actually think they're going to win tomorrow. Can I go first? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, so like I was saying before we started the live recording, this was a very confident group. Um, and the guy that's to, the, to my right on the screen following Campbell, if you remember during the game, I think he got – it was a breakaway, he got fouled. The dude actually points and winks at a camera in the NCAA tournament game. So that tells you the type of confident – the confidence that we had as a, as a, as a group with the ringleader being following Campbell, a.k.a. Shaq. Um, but, on, <laughs> but on a serious note, I mean, uh, like Coach said, we looked at the matchups, uh, starting Michigan State and then North Carolina. It was we didn't feel uh, any ounce of doubt. Um, and again, if you were around that team, you knew we were super confident. So maybe we looked past North Carolina, but at the same time, we were just super confident um, in that matchup that we had going against Carolina. So you get into the game and it starts 16 to two. It wasn't a great start. You guys are one of eight from the field. It looks like stuff's falling apart. I'll be honest, in the back of my mind as I'm calling the game, I'm like, let's just not get embarrassed. What's the thought, what's the thought uh, following when you guys are down 16 to two and Coach L calls that timeout and says, hey, look, they're already celebrating. We haven't started playing yet. Did that kind of calm you guys down? Were you like, yeah, you know what? There's still a lot of game left. Well, at first I was like, what the hell just happened? <laughs> <laughs> like, we came in with all the confidence. Like, no, this is going. This is a great matchup. And then they just punched us in the face. And it's like, hold on. All right, you know what? Let's calm down. You know what I mean? Let's just get back to our basketball. Because, again, there was still no pressure on us. Yeah. You know, I mean, when there's pressure on you, things get tight. Shots, you know, you know, don't fall. But, again, there was no pressure on us. It was like, all right, look, if we lose, it's supposed to happen. 
if we win, you know, we, we made another mark, you know. So, again, coach calmed us down. We went out there, started trapping, started moving, you know what I mean? And then next thing you know, we're getting fast break layups. We see the score coming down, and now the confidence is back. Yeah. You know, now we're feeling, okay, you know what? All right, yeah, we got punched in the face, but we still can compete with these guys. You know what I mean? So, I mean, Lamar, you know, the seniors hitting shots, and now, now it's just – Will is doing his thing, and John, like everybody is getting their confidence back, and now, now we're rolling again. Now we're in rhythm again. Well, let me ask you guys because there was a point again early in that first half. Tony comes in, he banks the three that kind of calmed you guys down. But Scott, you guys went to Sammy Hernandez, kind of an unsung guy. He <laughs> scored five yeah. straight yep. to get the lead down to six there in the first half, and I think that surprised yep. them, and I think maybe even helped you guys kind of get your momentum back when Sammy scored five points in like 90 seconds. Yeah. You know, the, the game of basketball is, is, is a game of, of game of flows. You know, it, it's a game of runs and, you know, unfortunately we started off that game in a bad run, but if you go back to before the, the tournament as well, if you, if you think about, we played Michigan state or I think the year before something yep. in, in, in DC and, and we played well and, and, we, we felt like we should have won the game. So going into these games, that was one of the things that Coach Hell talked about is like, we, we played these teams before. Like we've battled with them. We've had chances to win and beat these teams so we can compete with them. But I think Tony coming into the game and the, hitting that, that, that last shot, you know, right at the end of the shot clock, banking it in, gets it back to, you know, manageable numbers. And then Sammy was, a, is, was one of those guys. We didn't play very many guys that year. If, if you look back, uh, we, we played seven, eight. Uh, and these guys, the starting five uh, against UConn, I think played the last 13, 15 minutes of the game going into overtime. So we had a short bench, but Sammy did a tremendous job coming in off the bench. Gabe Nor Norwood was huge for us. You know, he started that first game in Michigan State. Uh, Jordan Carter came in and spelled some minutes. Uh, and I think Chris Fleming is as far as we went in terms of depth that year. So, you know, we had a, Again, we had a tremendous starting five. These guys were unbelievable, but we had supporting cast of guys that knew the role and understood what they had to do and, and came in and did it. And, and Sammy was huge. Sammy wasn't a guy that lacked confidence either, so he kind of fit all. nicely. <laughs> <At all. laughs> um, and he was my guy, but, you know, he was just, you know, he was just one of those guys that fit in nicely to that, to that puzzle. 27-20, you guys are down at halftime. And, again, this is a North Carolina team that was averaging 80 points a game that year. You go into halftime, you come back out, and that's when, Father, and you started talking about it earlier, you guys kind of unleashed the beast on them. We hadn't seen the scramble from you guys uh, pretty much that entire year. It was a staple of, of Coach L's previous teams back in 99 and 01. But you come out, and let me read you the, 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 the running box score here from the first six possessions of North Carolina the second half. Turnover. <laughs> turnover. <laughs> turnover. <laughs> Turnover, turnover. It was six straight, and yeah. all of a sudden it's 28-27, and Roy is slamming chairs down. What are you guys thinking coming out of the locker room? Who let the dogs out? <laughs> 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 no, nah, man, we um, – the energy, man, the energy. And, again, once we started seeing, like you said, the first turnover, the second turnover, leading to layups, oh, yeah, we knew that, that, that like I said, that confidence was there. And we was we was ready. I mean, we yeah we. <laughs> I'm gonna talk about that one, Levar. I'm gonna back, pick you back off that one. But yeah, I mean, like I said, it, it was all about the confidence and, and seeing that, uh, seeing the ball go in the basket, and them turnovers. That, that's what gave us that uh, that extra push. Levar, they had four freshmen that they relied on in their rotation. Did you guys kind of sense that when you started oh, sure. yelling into those guys that hey, they haven't seen this before, even if they've been in the ACC, we got these guys now. For sure, that definitely came into play. Um, we knew their the inexperience would come back to bite them or be uh, – oh, yeah, come back to bite them. So, like Shaq said, at the start of the game, we took the punch. So, I think the scramble was more so our turn to kind of just throw the punch. And they weren't expecting it. Um, like you said, that was something we hadn't done all season. So, they weren't expecting. They were young. And that was the result of the, you know, the six straight turnovers to start the second half for them. And they obviously being North Carolina and being a talented team didn't wilt. It was a kind of a back and forth game. And Lamar, I think one of the things that really stood out, and I went back and watched this game in full, is that you were four for four from inside the arc in that game. I wonder if they thought that you were just going to be an outside shooter, but you had a couple of times when you took the ball to the rack and got easy buckets at key points. 
did you sense that they were waiting for you to just shoot from the outside and, and you could take advantage on whether it was Wes Miller or, or the other guys guarding you? Why do you look surprised, Shaq? Inside the arc? <laughs> He's no, a slasher, a baby. He's a slasher. You know what it was? <laughs> no, Coach Hill, before, before, uh, yeah, before that game, he was like, look to be aggressive off the bounce. They're going to try to take your three away. Actually, that's what it was. And I remember one time I caught it, like left, less than a minute, no, like a minute left. I caught it in front of the bench, and I was looking to pass in the, in the post, and Coach L said, go by him. So you only have to tell me that once. And I literally went by, and that's when I got the floater. Um, pretty much, I think they put us up two possessions. But, yeah, that was all. But I'm sorry. I'm sorry to cut you off. Was, was Coach L behind you when he said that? No, it was right in front of the bench. I caught it. So and it you was like, right in front of the bench? Yeah, on the left okay, wing. Okay. And Coach L okay. was a long drive. Coach L was like, go by him. So, like, I heard that one time, and I didn't look at him. I just but, went right. You know what's crazy? Because I remember Coach L saying that to me when uh, when we played. I'm sorry to go off topic, but when we played um, UConn. Yeah. And Coach L was right behind me. That's when I hit that shot off Rudy Gay. He said, take him off the dribble. And I said, once I heard that, I said, oh, I got the green light. I'm ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I understand what you, you just felt good. Like, look, this is my chance to go. I can remember two times in my career where Coach, Coach L kind of opened the offense up. Coach L, I know you mm-hmm. remember this. My freshman year, NIT against St. Joe's. Like that week of practice, it was just free flowing. Just everybody play, like no rules, no system, just play. And going into this NCAA tournament, it was pretty much the same. Where he just opened the offense up, and he wanted the guys to be <clears throat> more aggressive than they probably have been in, since my freshman year. So I got attributed to Coach L just opening the offense up and just telling guys to be aggressive. I, it just showed he had a sense of trust in that team. Yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. I, don't think oh, I remember that because I got busy. I got busy on the scout team. She talking yeah. about <laughs> couldn't stop me. <laughs> Hey, hey, stop. hey, hey shot hey. fake king over there. That's why I added hey, the shot hey. to my game because of that guy. <laughs> shot fake king off the curl. Shot fake. <laughs> Shaq, let me ask you. You had a, a possession in that game. Shot clock's running down. You go to take the shot, and Rashad Terry blocks your three. They go back the other way. Next time down, you get the opportunity again. Same situation. Top of the key. Shot clock's running down. Rashad Terry's right there in your face. This time, you bury it. What was going through your mind where you're like, I got my shot blocked the last time, but I got to let this one go to have the confidence to knock down what was a huge three at that point? I mean, <laughs> playing fearlessly. I mean, like, like, like Lamar said, um, I mean, I'm a sophomore. Um, no pressure on me. I know I'm coming back next year. I just go out there and play. You know, um, like I said, the shot clock was going down, so I know, look, somebody got to shoot it. And the ball was in my hand, so... Again, the first time I got it blocked, but again, the second time, no pressure. I'm shooting it. You know what I mean? I felt good. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm shooting. It's, it's no. It was no. I, I had no pressure all all tournament. Yeah. And again, it comes down to, like Lamar mentioned earlier. You know, I go to a, I go to the basket. I make a layup or get an add one. I'm um, sorry, I get fouled, and I point at the camera. You know what I mean? Just because on. I'm just feeling good. Like, this, I'm on top of the world right now. I came to Mason because I knew we had a chance. I signed to Mason because I knew we had a chance to go to the NCAA tournament. So this is my dream. I'm just fulfilling my dream. So I'm just feeling good. There, there is no pressure at all. So, again, coming down to that shot, I just locked in and just shot it right over the top. I mean, it, it was th- th- that was it. Like, it was no pressure at all. Guys, let me ask you, at the end of the game, you end up sealing it from the free throw line. Tony makes three of the last four. Had to be a nice moment for you guys after he had to sit out that first game against Michigan State to see him be the guy that iced it from the free throw line. What's going through your mind as you're watching him put North Carolina away from the free throw line? Lamar, I'll start with you. Well, the message was to get the um, get back to home to play in D.C. So um, him having to sit out, uh, we can go back to the Michigan State game. Like we, I told him before the game, like we're not going to lose, and you're going to play against North Carolina. And Tony was on that team my sophomore year where we lost. Uh, we got embarrassed that we were up two at the half and got embarrassed. So it was a little bit of redemption. We talked about it before the game. Uh, like this is our redemption game, even though it wasn't the same team, but it's the same program uh, to get the W. But going back home, we just had that in our forefront of our mind because we get to go back home, play in front of our home fans at the Verizon Center. Um, that was just pretty much resonating um, amongst the team. Let's get back home to D.C. Father, what was the conversation like in the locker room after the game? You guys are done. You're going back home. I mean, just what's going to happen when we get home. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I, mean, 
I mean, we just were just <laughs> again. I mean, we were on cloud nine. We were excited, you know. I mean, with, with you know, with teenagers. Um, but again, it's like this, this is coming out of going to a mid major. This is things that we didn't expect. You know what I mean? So it's like game after game. It's like the excitement is is even more. And um, again, we we were excited when we got home, obviously, but we also knew our matchup also for the next round. And when we saw that, we was like, oh, "Hold on now, we 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 can go to the next level." Like we playing Wichita State, we we played them at their place and beat them there. There's no way we losing again. There's no way. So it's like the confidence just kept growing and growing. It's like, it, it, man, it's, it's it's a remarkable feeling. It was a remarkable feeling. Scott, do they have they forgiven you at North Carolina? Are you still <laughs> balls or? Yeah, well, leading up to the game, the question that I kept getting from people, especially associated with with Mason, is are, are you gonna who are you gonna be cheering for? Cheering for, I remember that. I kid you not. That was the question that I kept getting. I looked at him, and I, you know, I tried to be as nice as I could be. I said, they don't, "North Carolina don't pay the bills, right?" Like, <laughs> This, these are my guys. Like, come on now. Like that, I get, I get where you're coming from, but to me, that's just not. That's that's kind of a silly question. Like, exactly. come on now. This is these are my guys here, and this is these guys pay the bills. Like, <laughs> yeah, I always have an affinity towards Carolina because that's where I played. But man, we're on the court trying to go to the Sweet Sixteen. Like, mm -hmm. I'm doing everything I can. These guys know. They probably heard me during the games. I'm yelling things out before they're happening because yeah. I, I know what's getting ready to come next yeah. to try to help them. So, yeah. you know, I think just the what these guys have been talking about is the camaraderie of that team and the confidence and the ability that they had and, and the belief and just the, they were relaxed. You know, the, 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 the only time I saw them kind of tense was, was the final four, which is understandable. I mean, that's, that's a whole nother world that you get to it. If you haven't experienced it before, it, it's different, but yeah. you know, the matchups that we got, you have to be fortunate and it was so good. I felt so good for these guys, especially with all the stuff leading up to the tournament about how they shouldn't be in and Billy Packer and Jim Nance and all that stuff and how they went out and just – Michigan State was a perfect matchup. Uh, they had a big that could score, but they didn't have a four-man that was – he was a football player, so we could play off. We could sag off of him. Will could drop off and help. Like, North Carolina was very similar, even though David Noel kind of came out and hit a couple of jumpers on us to start. That's how we got behind, but we stuck with the game plan. And then when the chips, don't forget Murray state almost beat North Carolina in the first round. So yeah. all these things playing Michigan state the year before playing at North Carolina, being up to all these things kind of mixed into the bowl. And we, these guys talked about that stuff and knew they had the ability. And then when Wichita state chip fell, I was like, Oh, it's on now. Like these guys know they're going back home. They're playing Wichita State, who they beat there to basically get into the NCAA tournament. And that game, we came out, it was crazy. I know you're going to probably talk to other people about that. but And then when you get to UConn, it's just, hey, man, we got nothing to lose. Like, look at it. Look at where we're at. I mean, most people would, would die, to, would give whatever they could to get to where we were. Um, so it was, it was just a great group to be around. Coach L., uh, I don't know if you guys remember, he kind of modified our defense a little bit that year yeah. in terms of not being all out pressure all the way out on the floor. He kind of yeah. backed it up. We talked about 21 feet and in, and we were unbelievable defensively. Like we did, we still run and jumped and we still trapped. And we still caused turnovers and missed shots and ran, but those guys were really strong 21 feet and in and the matchups worked out. And, and after the game, man, I was, we were thrilled, uh, my nephew, my, my wife's nephew, he was upset. He's a huge Carolina fan. He he asked, he's like, that's unfair. Scott cheated. He cheated. <laughs> Do everything they were doing. So, you know, that was the cheated. stuff for me. But, I, I mean, I was so happy for our, these. He was just so happy for the, the team, for these guys, all the work and effort they put in, and obviously for the, for the university and for the program and for Fairfax, Virginia, to be a part of that ride was, was unbelievable. Last thing, guys, and I appreciate all the time that you've given us today uh, to reminisce about this. Grade Coach L's dance to kryptonite in the locker room. Awful. You saw it. We all saw it. It was awful. Oh, <laughs> I don't even man. think I could imitate it. <laughs> it was so bad. Yeah, that, 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 was, that was definitely awful. It was definitely <laughs> awful. But I think that the emotions and everything gone, we, we, we were happy to see him moving. 
And then, <laughs> but no, it, it was definitely bad. It yeah. was definitely bad. We we never laughed with him. It was always at him. I, I think he, he was more for the jokes. People laughed with him, but it was it was never so. <laughs> Awesome. Well, guys, again, thank you for the time. This has been uh, remarkable. We'll catch up uh, with a couple of you guys to talk a little UConn coming up as well. So, Scott, Lamar, Fallon, again, thank you for joining us on this edition of Patch Chat, a look back at the North Carolina game from 2006. All right, thanks, thanks Bill. Appreciate it.